Well, hello, everyone. Um, uh, greetings from the Bloomington uh, Unprogrammed Meeting. It's really lovely to be invited to be uh, part of your um, uh, worship experience today. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor and a pleasure. Um, today, uh, I'll be, uh, I'm a musician and a poet and an activist, and so that's by vocation, that's, that's what I do. So I'll be doing a couple uh, short songs and, uh, and a brief uh, little reflection. So this is the first song. It's called The Handing Over Time. The creek bed dries and then it fills The shadows lengthen as shadows will The last wild roses go to seed The summer birds, they take their leave As the light goes golden Curtains of leaves drift away The fields are filled with wheels of hay The yellow finches fade to gray At least the ones who choose to stay As the light goes golden Something there right in my palm It was here and then it's gone The creek bed dries and then it fills The shadows lengthen as shadows will As the light goes golden go. All that rust in the light and all the dust, it all comes round, round again. So the handing over time, this idea um, of uh, we are entering into when one season hands over to the next. Um, I find these particularly poignant moments um, in the course of the seasons, but also in the course of a lifetime. So I'm going to read something from the Almanac of the Soul by Marvin Hiles. Autumn is officially weeks away, but with the opening of school and that fall feeling in the air, the beginning of September is the adopted start of fall. The rich yellows of August begin to burnish into the deepening gold of September. The year matures. Day hours flirt with summer, but the night speaks of the inevitable passing of summer's extroverted hours. 
kiss the light as it flies. One of the most poignant sounds in nature is when the crickets begin singing in the daylight hours, even when the sun is high in the sky. They are responding to the abbreviated light that is now two hours less than it was in June. The summer is passing, disappearing into herself like the reluctant child closing a door on the warm, playful dusk. Autumn, the new child, stands behind a tree waiting for her moment. There is an inevitability about these boundary weeks. Loss is a natural part of human life, but we trust that though we lose many things in the course of a lifetime, we trust we find them again in deeper ways. There are a few things we can take with us into the autumn. We can, for one thing, sit still and let something else manage our life and world to be. I love that. Uh, I, uh, the Almanac of the Soul is something my friend Parker Palmer gave me years ago. It's one of those dog-eared, um, underlined um, uh, almanacs that I, I often read from. And uh, the, the autumn ones, I think, I find most poignant. And there's a certain sense of purpose and rightness and rhythm that comes out of handing one season to another. There's a bittersweetness as we realize that summer went surprisingly fast this year and that the turning of a page has already happened. And the harvest is here with all its joyous bounty and inevitable long last looks. As Emily Dickinson said, the summer light escapes into the beautiful. This is the season when long ago, my chattering kindergartner let go of my hand and stepped up into a bright yellow school bus. It is the season when that same brilliant daughter, now 17 years old, waved from the entrance of her college dormitory as my husband and I drove away proud and worried and excited and bewildered at how 17 years could possibly have gone so quickly. It is a time of year when my family will often gather on my sister's back porch for Labor Day weekend, have a picnic style lunch uh, with my father. The man who I believed at one point in my life to be the tallest, strongest person on all the planet, who is now 95 years old, still in blessed good health, bright and intelligent with a full head of gray hair, and yet noticeably less steady as he walks into the room. It is the time of year when driving home last night from a political fundraiser I was singing for, when the sky was a beautiful Maxville Parish painting of pink and purple and blue, when the late summer fields and trees were deep green and now tinged at the tops and the sides with the changing color of late summer and early autumn. It is now when I take stock of the continuing story of my life, the continuing story of my community, the continuing story of our beautiful and yet environmentally beleaguered planet. It is a time to allow for the nature's rhythms of a lifetime, the natural turning of seasons. It is a time to remember and release the unchangeable past to lean into the uncertainties and promise of an unknowable future and to abide in the now with gratitude and awareness, claiming a truer and more present awareness. I personally find these handing over times a moment to abide. And I love the word abide I think Quakers know about that when, as we sit in silent worship. It is different than being, and that being being very a powerful practice, but abiding is to be with a certain kind of spiritual um, presence, openness. When people ask me about 
Quaker silent worship, they say, now, how does, how does all that work? You know, it's like you make your life in sound carry and you go to a silent worship meeting. And I, I say, generally, some of my best language has emerged out of taking time to abide in sacred space, in presence, to listen and not just speak. To ask good questions, the questions that can only come up in the silence in times of reflection, to appreciate how others are abiding with me in that, um, in that uh, creative and uh, sacred space. So I'm going to do one more song for you. Um, since we're talking about the questions that come up in the silence, this song has a sense of abiding, uh, a sense of that idea of letting go of what uh, is unchangeable in the past, to lean into what is coming and to be with what is now, to abide with what is now. Um, it's called A Book of Questions and uh, was inspired by a Jean Lohman poem, Jean's Quaker uh, poet. And she um, uh, started writing poetry when she turned 65, which I love. And she went uh, on to write many collections of beautiful poetry into her 90s. And uh, she wrote a book, uh, a poem called um, Questions Before Dark, and that inspired this. I loved her sense of being with all that was, all that is, and the promise uh, of what is yet to be. Do you put honey in your tea? Do you let it cool gradually? Or do you feel a strange wash of time and memory? Have you made peace with your worst day? Ever kiss in a busy cafe? Are there things that you feel but you still don't know how to say? A brief as the light on wheels of hay All that we've kept or have given away Questions that come before dark at the end of the day. Did you lose a lover or friend? Was there a story that just had to end? Did you finally learn what kept coming around again? in a bookstore are there things you don't do anymore ever watch an oncoming train or a gathering storm a brief as the light on wheels of hay all that we've kept or have given away Questions that come before dark at the end of the day. Did you say yes? Did you say no? Was it true? Or just wasn't so? Did you land hard or gracefully? Was it not what you planned, but right where you needed to be? Did you ever make a grilled cheese? Ever pray down on your knees? Ever love a place that you still had to leave? Did you have a, did you walk before you crawled? 
or have a dog when you were small? Did you make it through, but it was such a close call? Brief as the light on wheels of pay, all that we've kept or have given away. Questions that come for dark at the end of the day. Let us enter into worship. <laughs> 